Lord Goldsmith has accused the government of stepping off the world stage and withdrawing leadership on climate change and nature. Is there any substance to that? Well, this week, the Independent Climate Change Committee said the government was significantly off track in getting to net zero carbon emissions by 2050. It said progress was worryingly slow and it was markedly less confident than a year ago that the government would reach its targets. The committee said the government's support for new oil and gas in the North Sea was sending confusing signals to the international community about its climate priorities. The government is considering granting more than 100 new licences to drill, including a huge oil field called Rosebank, which could be approved in the coming weeks, despite the UN saying that new extraction is incompatible with limiting global warming. The committee also said that the approval of a new coal mine in Cumbria undermined the careful agreements negotiated by the UK when it hosted COP26 in Glasgow a year and a half ago. When it comes to foreign competition, the UK has enjoyed a reputation as a leader on things like wind power, but there have been growing calls from the renewable industry for more support in response to the huge subsidies packages being offered in America and the EU. Former Conservative Prime Minister Theresa May has just given a speech in which she said... We have been slow to act in the face of intense competition from abroad, where the UK once led. We are now falling behind. Perhaps the most damaging accusation in Lord Goldsmith's resignation letter was that the government has effectively abandoned an £11 billion pledge to help the most vulnerable countries deal with climate change. Rishi Sunak denied this, but any suggestion the UK won't deliver on such a critical promise could seriously undermine future climate negotiations and this country's influence on them.